Come on. Welcome to another exciting episode of the energy that surrounds us. And I got to give a quick shout out to my cousin, Tyler Estes, who did that awesome intro and the outro to this show. If you all need any intro, outro videos done, hit me up. I can put you in touch with them. He is awesome. So with that being said... I am joined again tonight with my amazing co-host, Michelle Gray, Thank you. who is with us working on preparing her podcast show. How's that coming? Slow, but I've got festival coming, so I plan on knocking out a, quite a few interviews there. Since cool. it's not live, it'll be good. I'm going uh, to tell you boys about it later. <laughs> Cool. So we have a really special treat for you all tonight. It's a, our guests are a little bit different than our normal guests that we have on the show and for a very unique reason. And with that lead in, I'm going to introduce you all to the Curious Twins Paranormal. Yay. Would you guys like awesome. to introduce yourselves? Sure, sure. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having us on the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, we are our Curious Twins tours, and we offer uh, a wide array of experiences in the paranormal in San Antonio and also outside of San Antonio, Texas. So um, we originally started in 2017, and we started uh, you know, doing ghost tours in downtown San Antonio. And since then, we have grown um, we now do tours uh, in different properties, including Victoria's Black Swan Inn. We also do a tour out of a Masonic Lodge in a historic district just south of downtown. Um, we do river walk tours. We do downtown tours. We also occasionally, uh, once every quarter, we'll go out to Yorktown, Texas, and do a tour and investigation of Yorktown Memorial Hospital. Um, but we are also really excited to share that our, our newest venture is branching outside of tours and going into podcasting ourselves. And I'll let Fred share a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, 
what we've started is is kind of like a, it's a travel podcast, you know, and so it's called Curious Travels. Um, it is all about dark tourism, and, and you know, you may have heard about dark tourism a little bit from you know the Netflix show Dark Tourist that became really popular and took you to all kinds of places, you know, associated with death, destruction. Um, but also, you know, associated with with mystery, with the paranormal, with these kinds of things. And so um, that podcast, what it does is it, it basically, it serves a travel guide. We, we start off in a city and we tell you about the city. We tell you about its dark history. We tell you about its indigenous history. Um, and then we tell you all kinds of stories about that city and we tell you where to go and how you might experience some of that dark history yourself. Um, we definitely include stories about ghosts and cryptid creatures and uh, we never Never, ever shy away from visiting a cemetery and recommending cemeteries to people as well. Um, you know, we kind of look at it as, you know, I think people have asked us, like, why are you so obsessed with death and destruction and these kinds of things? And I think for us, it, it's not that we're obsessed with this stuff, but we look at these things, these parts of our history, these dark areas where people suffer, where people experience injustice, and we just kind of look at them and say, hey, it, it, we learn from them, we tell these stories just maybe we could do better. And so, you know, aligning ourselves with darkness isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think it right. is much more positive than um, people think. I love that idea. And I'm kind of curious because with you being in San Antonio and you mentioned the Victoria Black Swan Inn, which I have been to, yeah. and I learned something about the history there that was never taught to me in school yeah. and that's what i think your show will do great at is bringing a lot of the lost history back and that was that the black swan inn was a part of the second texas revolution yeah it sure and was i bet nobody even knows there was a second texas war for independence i didn't know that i'm from texas <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, Texas has a lot of surprises. Um, and, and some of those surprises are, are, are pretty violent ones and, and ones that people lost their lives. And so um, I, I think sometimes we want to come off as a state of, you know, the proud, the strong, the courageous. And so sometimes we, you know, we tell stories a certain way. Um, but I think that there is value to those stories and pointing out those things that have been forgotten about the story is seldom told you know uh you know about 36 members of the texian army being ambushed by the mexican army the day before the battle of salado you know there's so there's just little stories like that that we can bring out and kind of paint a picture of, of who we have been and perhaps you know maybe who we want to strive to be as people right right and i think that goes a long way too of kind of in a way tying a lot of locations in certain areas together because like Yorktown has its history and Goliad, Gonzalez, all of those are over there. And so it's like when you start thinking about that and going, well, some of the spirits that may have been there now make more sense knowing that part of history Yes. And just sitting there focusing on, okay, your town was built, say, the 1930s. So it's got to be yeah. the 1930s to current. No, it's stuff happened long before that, but yeah. people forget about that. For sure. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it, just kind of understanding the land itself, you know, yeah. what's in the land, what's around us, it, Very it, it's, it's big. You know, I think like, you know, we don't look at things like nature as often as we should in the paranormal. Um, we just kind of, we felt to, we kind of forget about it. But the truth is, is, you know, I think that there, many parapsychologists, they see similarities in places with bodies of water and how this exacerbates paranormal energy, you know, also limestone doing the same thing in places, uh, you know, caves, caverns, you know, have been described as places where people experience the unknown and venture into complete darkness. So, Nature really can, you know, understanding that and understanding just that process there, I think can also cue us in to, to what spiritually might be part of that area. So token explorers are asking for a link and the link is in the description, but I will give you guys time to talk about the links that you sent us, I should say, are in the description. 
your podcast. I'm not sure if that was mentioned, and if it wasn't, we'll link it in. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody who is looking to to get in touch with us, they they can go through our website, CuriousTwins.com. Um, that's going to be the main kind of hub for people who are interested in booking a tour with us, booking a reading with us, or just getting in touch with us. Also, um, we are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are also on TikTok. Um, and if you're looking for our podcast, Curious Travels, you can find that anywhere that podcasts are found. Um, but we are sourcing our, our podcasts directly from Spotify for podcasters. There you go. Very mm -hmm. sorry, we were both writing down the information. That's good. Uh, I was, yeah, I was writing down the podcast uh, show name, and so um oh they're wanting to know the stream link to watch it so that would be you'd have to log into spotify.com and look up curious travels yes absolutely so yeah. i'm gonna take a moment because this is i gotta tell you this podcast show is fascinating but i want to kind of rewind the clock a little bit and i'm just curious on a two-part question is how did you guys meet and was it the paranormal that brought you together or did you guys have paranormal experiences growing up and we're like hey let's just do this sure um well we we met kind of by chance um and we, we kind of hit it off right away and uh that kind of first night you know i kind of opened up and i let him know you know that i that i that i read that i'm a sensitive um, that I'm very interested in these things. And so I actually, um, believe it or not, um, I offered to read his cards and he uh, accepted. And that was really kind of our, our first interaction, um, read cards and he felt that they kind of were spot on. And that's kind of how we got to begin to know each other a little. Yeah. I was gonna uh, say it had to be a good reading because you guys are together. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a really good reading. And, and I, I'll say that I was, I was, just really drawn to that uh the fact that he was so open in, in in that you know the fact that he was so so willing to share that part of him and i was like okay this is a this is a weirdo that i could uh you know spend the rest of my life with and so so we <laughs> we started dating and i you know i will say the the, the second part of your question is, is the paranormal definitely did you know, you unite us in a way that, um, you know, other couples didn't really have, ha don't really have that opportunity. And I think that um, going on romantic walk in, walks in cemeteries, like, you know, That's going and, and it, really it really is romantic and, <laughs> and visiting the haunted properties and, you know, doing what we're doing in our, our podcast, which is visiting destinations that are scary and have a dark history and, have a, a history of, of death and destruction, uh, not just related to the paranormal, but just the things that have happened there. And so that was part of our early relationship is, is doing these things together and recognizing that we're both really into them. Um, For sure. And then, you know, we really hit it off and the rest is history. Yeah, I, I think that one of the other things that kind of united us very weirdly is Unsolved Mysteries. Um, you may remember the show. <laughs> oh, I loved that okay. show. Yeah. It's a wonderful show. Um, you know, and that's really a great inspiration for the podcast. But right. we we also kind of low-key, we wanted to visit all these like unsolved mystery locations. And so that became like a bucket list of like all the episodes, the places they shared, we wanted to go there. And uh, and a lot of them were uh, you know, kind of within the paranormal sector. When you get down to our area, I actually know of a murder house that nobody's investigated. Oh, how, how it's in a small town uh, near my daughter. So oh. I'll message you guys after the awesome. show. I love that. Thank you so much. Information. I just remember driving by it and being told the woman was rolled up in a rug and shoved in the attic. Wow. A while. So you know that thing has yeah. got to be hot. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. Sounds like a mafia, so. Yeah, I'll let you guys know. You'll have to do your own awesome. research. Thank you very much. Well. Thank you. Thank you. I so think much. the house is still vacant. Oh, wow. um, which is even better because we know yeah. the soup brews better when nobody's in there. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get you the information, whatever I know, and we can go from there. Thank you. You're Thank very you. And you'll so, have to come. You know, we'll all have to have dinner together. 
that would be great. That would be oh, great. Yeah. So one of the things I like doing with my show is promoting events. And I know you guys have an event coming up in September. But before that, I like promoting the ghost tours and history walks like you do. And I promote the one in Cleburne. Shout out to Tracy Mays and her team, Wandering Soul. And Mineral Wells does theirs. And so I feel like that's an unknown missing aspect of the paranormal that a lot of paranormal investigators should do. Sure. And so I'm just kind of curious, what are the ghost walks and your tours like? Sure. Um, they're different than I think the standard, uh, you know, we did a lot of ghost tours. We did a lot of ghost walks. We, you know, we just wanted to learn. It was, I'm ADD and the easiest way to learn is like when you're at some place, you know? And, um, and so we just did a lot of different things. And one of the things that we realized is they're great, you know, but so often they didn't include indigenous history. They didn't include the land formation. They didn't include just the, you know, that, that meat that is the before, before the hunt. Right. And, and so we, we really try to stress that, you know, all of our tours, you know, we do try to bring in indigenous history and who these people were. And, and perhaps that's why it's also haunted because of these connections. You know, we, we spent a lot of time doing tours along the San Antonio river. And, and of course, you know, there's this indigenous connection. So we like to share that. Um, and I think that's what sets us a little bit apart. We also are a big believer that the paranormal isn't always scary. It, of course, it can be. It can be very scary. Um, but it can also be profound. It can be beautiful. It can be healing. And so when you go on a tour, you might get that ghost story that isn't so scary, but maybe more inspiring than anything else. And so, you know, it, it's it runs the gamut a little bit, but I think that's what to expect. Yeah, and I'll just add, um, when we were doing other tours, um, you know, we, we recognize that everybody has their own thing, and um, some are theatrical, some are, you know, not so theatrical, um, but what we wanted to do with our tours is, is make it a little bit different, because it felt like a lot of tour companies was just an extension of what you were learning in, in Texas history, um, or in history classes. And what we wanted to do is focus on the things that, you know, what are the things that we're not proud of as a, as a society, as a culture? Um, and why aren't we talking about those things? Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes we're going to get people angry. People are not going to be happy hearing about these things. Yeah. But we think that it's really important to bring those to the forefront and, and share why there's trauma in a space or in a building or at a location. Um, share why a place might be haunted or why there might be energy there that is is just not not fun or not resolved. Um, and so for us, it's it's about digging deeper and and being ourselves. You know, we're we're just two guys. You know, we're we're not actors. We're not going to dress up in in Victorian dress. Um, we are are just two guys who love history. We're nerds, and we want to share what we learn with people, and that's really what what we're all about. And I think that's really that, cool. Most hauntings are from trauma. Yeah. I exactly. mean, it's almost like you can't have a haunting without a leading up trauma. Either it's because they died too fast or they got murdered too slow mm -hmm. or they got left there. You know, I mean, it's it goes down. Our mommy didn't treat them right. Or, exactly. you know, there's always a trauma that leads to a yeah. haunting, in my opinion, or, a, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, no, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. And and sometimes even, you know, when you come across that trauma, I think there's still that chance to have a little bit of healing. And right. so when we tell these stories with this idea of trying to have a little bit of justice for that person, trying to tell the truth, um, you know, it, it can be pretty cool. And like, you know, I've, I had an experience one time at the Minger Hotel, you know, as, as uh, you know, a person who's very sensitive, I consider myself a medium. Um, Steven was doing a tour. Um, where he was leading this part of the tour, and we were right at the Minger Hotel, and we were talking about a, a spirit there named Sally White, a uh, very popular spirit. A lot of people know who she is, and um, 
we talk about the injustice that happened, how her her husband, her common law husband, you know, he shot her in the back and killed her. And then he skipped town, never to be seen from again. And we try to tell the truth about her and the dedication she had for the Minger family and for the hotel. And there was one instance where I, I felt something just kind of, I felt like cold air, but just something just crisp. I guess that's how I would describe I, it. Just something yeah. really crisp. And I just looked over my shoulder, and as Stephen is talking, I see probably a five-foot glowing kind of, mm -hmm. it's not an orb, but it's, I guess, a kind of a glowing shadow. Right. Um, and at that point, like, I just kind of see, like, kind of the head, like, moving and just, like, agreeing with what Stephen is saying. Um, and I just wow. felt this, the spirit of thanks, you know, like, you know, okay, this, like, my story is, is, is accurate. You know, you're telling something that that is trying to give me a little bit of light and um and that interaction with sally white is something that i that i i I'll never forget because i thought it was one right. of gratitude right wow that's so cool and i think i'm gonna be okay but when you were talking my my battery life on my phone just like shot down to yellow i've never even seen oh, no. the bar so oh wow something. Drain. Usually, do that. Yeah, usually yeah. spirits don't come in my house or at least let me know, but something just drained my phone battery. So if y'all lose me at any point, that's okay. what's going on is that okay. that was just weird. But you mm -hmm. when you were talking about seeing the the entity sure. or the, the bodyless yeah. or, or it just went shh. Like wow. it, just like <laughs> that is something. Wow, <laughs> that's never happened before. So. Of, yeah and one of the things i think is important to mention is like as we're talking about like traumas to the land and yeah. to people yeah. is not all traumas were bad like it could have been an accidental like a ho got hit by a horse by accident oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or drowning or you know somebody sure. thought they saw somebody attacking someone and drew and fired and misread sure. the situation and so you know it was an unfortunate accident but that yep. leaves just as strong a mark as somebody who like a serial killer who was mass killing people in an area there is in my opinion no distinction between how people died what mark that leaves michael great point yeah i agree with you thank you for sharing that we might have to have a spicy debate about that later. But. <laughs> well, we, we also come across, you know, places where there's a lot of fond memories and there's a lot of... Oh, those are the best. Yeah. Yeah. It's like oh, a yeah. warm blanket yeah. fresh out of the dryer. Oh, I yeah. Loved, I loved doing make readies back in the day when I'd go into a house that was so full of love. Like you could almost smell the cornbread in the oven and yeah. feel the warmth. Those are the best. But then there's the others too. Sure. Where you're like, you shrink up to like this. Sure. Cause it's just the yuck factor is yeah. so bad in there. For sure. You know, and, and I think we've experienced a little bit of both. And, you know, I think, you know, for the most part, uh, I think that many people experience positive interactions with spirits, even when, the spirit has some trauma, you right. know, um, you know, it, it, I think in the most cases, I think a lot of spirits, you know, they want to coexist with us. They want yes. the stories to be said. They don't want their names to necessarily be forgotten. Um, you know, and I think that that in itself, you know, is, is not necessarily bad. I think the the spirit world, I, I, I've even interacted with spirits that they decide to stay here simply yeah. because it Love feels it. good. It, it feels yeah. good boy it feels home yeah and, and i think you guys will agree i mean especially when it comes to texas history we have a kind of unique way of teaching our history is either <laughs> your name was really well known or your name was just so funny we have to include it in the history and i think you know who i'm talking about the famous philanthropist woman <laughs> in texas who it's like every time you see her name, it's like, what was this dad thinking? But I'm gonna have to send me that. I, I'm wondering, uh, you know, talking it. about fond memories, it's like, you know, I wonder if her spirit ever comes back and it's like, look, people, I get it. My name was unique and kind, sounds kind of funny, but 
can we let it go and move on? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. You you owe me a name, Michael. Text me in. I don't know who you're talking about. You don't know I'm a hog? No. Daughter of, I believe, a governor. No. I don't know that. We were talking about I see flags. Steven's shaking his head up and down. He knows the story. <laughs> but see, I'm not as big of a history buff as you guys. Like, I like genealogy, but I'm out looking at pine cones where y'all are reading the history of something, you know. So mm -hmm. that's that's good, though, because then you just get back in the car and get the quick briefing. <laughs> I love that. But I love historical markers. I mean, yeah. I've been very late to places because there was just a run of historical markers. So I'm like, yeah, I don't want there anyway. So <laughs> just going to read these yeah. markers. So does, do like historical markers, do you guys ever look to those to try to find places? Definitely. Um, I, I definitely like I, I actually want to point out a good example of how historical markers can be everything. Right. Um, here in San Antonio, you know, we have um, kind of the story that the Spanish governor's palace is where we had executions. Oh, and yeah. so for years and years, you know, we, we tell the story of how in the courtyard we would execute people by hanging. Right. It, it never happened there. You know, what? there's no physical proof it ever happened there. But in the same plaza, right above it, there used to be an oak tree. Right. And it was not in the courtyard, but it was at the be it was kind of like we're today our city hall is right yeah, yeah, the hanging city hall. that was where the hanging tree was yeah. and there is a historical marker that commemorates it but yet if you go downtown any evening after nine o'clock there's a ghost tour out i guarantee you they're going to tell you what happened at the spanish governor's palace so we can use roadside markers to point us in the right directions point us right. into the directions of where darkness and trauma exist and then you know, we can use intuitive skills and technology to, to go a step further. So interesting thing about that tree that was cut down. I met a lady named, she's, she's gone now. She might enter, she might come in and talk if I say this wrong, but Esmeralda or as something like that, she came in and it was like her great, 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 whatever was hung there. And the grandmother at the time, which is the wife of the man, there, a limb fell down when he fell down and she kept the stick oh, in wow. her i met her umpteenth great granddaughter or whatever and they still had the stick wow how that's cool so, is that? that is incredible like, you know, long after but evidently that was the thing that people would collect bark or something oh, from yeah. the tree sure where, and i was like they knew that essence of that person would attach to yeah. things plus the memory of well, I, I love that i love yeah, that and, and i gone. i've been in dark tourism people have been yeah. doing that for years you know yeah. like yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, here there's a in in san antonio we have the, of course the alamo right right and then, you know after the battle after 1836 all these people die we have this mass cremations in the street but then yeah. we have like these curious people in the 1850s 1840s and they are literally taking pieces of the building, yes. pieces of brick. They're taking whatever they can get. And these are souvenirs, you know. Um, it, it's a weird thing. You know, there was a case uh, in 1929 of this man who killed all of his family. Charlie Lawson killed all of his family on Christmas Day. Oh, wow. um, and that day, his daughter had made a, a raisin cake. And that raisin cake, they were eating it. They had had some for breakfast. They had left it on the table. And after the murder happened, the brother-in-law, he decided to turn this into kind of an attraction because one child survived. And he was like 15 years old, and he was going to need money. And so they started charging people a quarter to come in and see the murder house. And they left it just the way it was. But people were so interested in that raisin cake because they had left it on the table that people were stealing the raisins and keeping them as souvenirs. Wow. For some reason, humanity, I think, senses that spirit that, can leave these impressions on places and things and items, yeah. and we want them, you know? I think we well, all know. The interesting thing is there's a lot of cases where you read, like, marshals and um, ju judges, the sheriffs, the Texas rangers, 
after a hanging would have to fire their weapons in the air to get the people to part because everybody, the second an execution was done, would flood in to get their souvenir. It was like, wow. yeah. And so they would have, yeah. And it's like, like you're saying, you know, I'm surprised it lasted that long with the Alamo. I would have thought it was be almost, you know, a week later, people are like, hey, you know, yeah. here's a shoe from somebody. Let You know, let's keep this. I, I, if the population we have today, it would have been the same day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I have a question for, for pretty much everybody yeah. um, because we've, we've all got something. And so do you realize that the more popular, like when I go to the Alamo, I don't feel any spirit energy at the Alamo. I feel like the 5G and the 4G really interrupts. Like when I lived in the city and then I come down to my Granberry house, it was like night and day. The minute I got away from all the 5Gs and, and everything, like it cleared up. Do any of you have the same problem when you're too populated? You cannot. So pick up your kind of sort of. But OK, so I, I do it differently. Um, I I usually I, I receive pretty much direct communication, right. you know, and when I may be in a position where I'm not getting that. Maybe it's some crowded. Maybe there's some kind of other stressor there. Uh, I, I'll use spirit guides to do the communication kind of for me. And that kind of breaks it up. So I guess I haven't paid attention enough because I use that crutch. Yeah. I don't know um, with the spirit guides doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. What, Michael? Yeah. Um, I would have to say using the Alamo as a reference point. I've never really picked up a lot in the Alamo, but then if you remember historically, only two or three people actually died in the building that exists now as the Alamo. And majority of the people were on the grounds. And so, yeah, on the grounds, I'll see and I'll feel all kinds of stuff. And it's like, everyone's like going, well, the Alamo is the haunted building. I'm like, actually, it's the grounds because mm -hmm. there was the walls around it that were where everybody was defending. They weren't inside the building, per se, yeah. except for, if memory serves right, was Bowie, his servant, who was free but chose to stay by his side, and maybe one guard, but that was it so there wouldn't be much yeah like trauma physically in the building but the surrounding the building oh my gosh it's like off the chart see but there's nothing for me I, a lot of my just flyby readings and stuff come from organic things like um touching a rock or the tree or being able to to take my shoes off and touch the ground or my hands touch the ground i kind of have to be grounded there's so much concrete and so much, so many people, I'm more likely to read off of somebody that's yeah. there instead of the place itself. I, I just, everything is rooted organically for me. I'm going to suggest, um, I have experienced some crazy stuff on the grounds of the Alamo, but it's never been in, you know, in prime operating hours, usually, you know, yeah. um, I, I have experienced it very early in the morning. Um, like six o'clock, six thirty in the morning out there. Um, I think that's a really good time to go late at night. Um, I also experienced, um, we both experienced like cannonball smoke, um, I at one point and that was right after a rainstorm. It had just rained. Yep. And shortly after that, we experienced, um, that cannonball smoke that kind of just materialized out of nowhere. Yeah. The but hot metal -y kind of smell. What's interesting with the Alamo that a lot of people I don't think realize is there's storefronts that's like along the front, I think, of the building. And they found when exposing the floor of like their basement, if it was wood, pulling it up, the actual wall of the Alamo was still there. Oh, wow. It was like they built over the wall. And so it's like, we have to realize, it's like, when we sit there and say, oh, this is the side of the Alamo, this, you know, it's never moved. It actually has been lifted up. It's not in its true original spot. I didn't know that. 
And so I'm like, it to me explains why you'll hear of like some people saying in some of the stores going, well, we had this, you know, random sound, you know, we can't explain. And it's like, because you're on the wall. That's yeah. where the people were fighting. Well, I, I think one of the other things to notate about the Alamo is, you know, the complex had an exit. And that exit went under the Alamo and it was used, you know, in case of an emergency. Um, and so this goes, you know, it, it goes underground. And, you know, Mr. Minger was able to kind of tap into that when he built a tunnel for his brewery. And so, you know, we know that this exists. We know that those kinds of things. And so we know that there is, you know, there's energy that's going to connect to the river, that's going to connect to that exit, that's going to connect yeah. to the building's next door. You know, and this was a fight that would have taken place uh, today over what is several blocks. You know, this was pretty big. And then after that fight, they would have ridden up to, of course, you know, Main Plaza, where the cathedral was or is today, you know, um, and they would have raised the Mexican flag there. And so we're thinking you know, blocks and a large amount of space that is associated with this. And then you also have this nervous energy in the area. You had, you know, what, 12 days? Right. Guys just kind of yeah. holding off. Right. Yeah. And the interesting thing was, is the bombardment would have been early in the morning and late at night. Yes. During the heat of the day, they probably wouldn't have been firing so much because they're like, hey, <laughs> you know, they're not going anywhere. Let, let's, you know, not overheat ourselves, not overheat the cannons. So yep. let's just, you know, watch, make sure they don't leave. We can do that with pickets. And it was like, yeah, during, they were actually given during the daytime time to reinforce certain areas. They could see where. Oh, yeah. People could have left in the day, like, you know. <laughs> You could have left, you know, if you decided you wanted to surrender and you didn't want to be, you could have just walked away, you know, really. Right. Yeah. But I'm kind of curious with the history of the Alamo, the new kind of controversial topic that's hidden the Alamo right now. And, of course, you know, it's Davy Crockett being he was a congressman. There are a lot of people saying there's evidence that he was in Mexico after the Alamo and that Santa Ana would have killed him because a U.S. congressman is a huge target for funding a war. And so I kind of feel like, you know, that makes more sense than just killing everybody that's there because it's not like, you know, with 136 versus 5,000, you really got to pick everybody off. They, they could have taken their time and lined up and been like, hey, that's a valuable target. Shoot everybody around them. They'll surrender. We can take prisoner. What's your guys' thoughts on that? Um, I I think there's a lot of controversial stuff. Like <laughs> <that. lot. laughs> um, in, in regards to the current stuff at the Alamo. Um, you know, there is evidence of, you know, that Santana did not kill everybody. You know, we know from, you know, instances that he let some people go. Um, we also, you know, we have some survivors and they, they tell their stories. And so, you know, it, it wouldn't be completely inconsistent. Um, Santana, Santana was also a man of ego. And as a man of ego, he wanted people to know of his power, of his ability to destruct. And so that also fits the bill. Maybe I'm going to leave a little bit to the survivorship because they can tell these stories. And that's sort of valuable, not only then and now, but almost like for the history of yeah. Mexico and for how he would be remembered as well. Yeah. Right. And it's also interesting looking at, you know, Texas during this time frame is – Everybody remembers the cry at San Jacinto is remember the Alamo as they're charging, you know, and it's like that wasn't the cry. The cry was 
remember the Alamo, remember Goliad. Mm -hmm. And Goliad was like, I think it was like 50 some, 80 some men who were escorted out with Fannin and were massacred on the road. Yeah, I can't go to that. Everybody is like, it, yeah, well, that's a very complicated. It's a little more than that. Um, you know, we, we, we have, you know, fan and battleground. We have a, some mass, we have some death that happened there. Not a lot of people right. died there. Um, people were left in that, that battleground for like up to a week, you know, just kind of left there and slowly they were brought over to the presidio and then they were all executed, you know? And so, it, it was a huge amount of death. And this is days after the, the fall of the Alamo when there's, I mean, not days, but like, you know, within two weeks, right. you know, we have, you know, close to 500 men that are killed. And, you know, Fannin asked for very little. He asked just to not be shot in the head and for his belongings to be given to his family. And as soon as he's executed or when they execute, they shoot him in the head. And they all steal his belongings, you know. Of so, course, um, you know. I, I think that, that that sometimes we don't really look at the story of Goliad, but also, to be fair, you know, the mess that Goliad was, <laughs> you know, like yeah. there's a lot of disorganization, a lot of what led up to the death of all these men was error, you know, and that in itself has to be sort of haunting. And. I kind of feel like, too, is I think a lot of the land may also be, you know, having more trauma than normal because you had the ego of the leaders. Like, Travis was told to evacuate and was like, hell no. Fannin was told, you're going to march here. And he's like, no, I'm not marching until I'm ready. Right. And it's like Houston's dealing with all these generals that were put in place that all want to just serve themselves. And it's like, and all seeking their own glory. And it's like, how many people paid the price for their personal glory? And it really makes you wonder why certain ones are remembered. Like Fanon kind of almost disappears into history. Not many people remember him, but it was like he played a major part too. And I yeah. went to the Presidio and I was at his the grave and the wall and everything and i could just feel everything there but at the same time i was amazed to learn of the savior of the presidio yeah and how there was a lady who was smuggling the texians out of the presidio and into safe area and it's like wow you know where where is that story yeah. Yeah. We, you know, we, we do, we still in Texas history, we are about ego and we, we tend to miss stories. And, and I hate to say this, you know, um, we do a really bad job of including women in that history in the light that they should be given. Right. Yeah. And it's uh, like, you're saying, you know, the his the historical markers, it's like, that's where I read that was on a historical marker, her story. And I was yeah, like, I know the exact one. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, and the one thing that I think that stung the most that I was like, really was like shocked about was the massacre took place on Easter and the Mexicans and Spaniards, highly Catholic. I'm sitting here thinking, Wait a minute, you just executed all these people on the holiest of resurrection days. Right. What the hell kind of karma did that put on the land? Yeah. You know, I hear all this and I don't know a lot about the history part of it, but I know the feeling part of it. Sure. And I feel I I hear, you know, all you history buffs talking about that war. But when I go there, I feel things that are so dark that go so much further back. Like that whole town, and they have the nicest people. But just that ground, I get that ache in my stomach where it's oh, just yeah. so oh, yeah. much. And it goes so much further. Like it's not just the soldiers, but it goes back. Something gruesome happened with Indians there. Yeah, but I, I, it is so much murder. And it's almost like I noticed that all these like with these murder spots and these places where all of these things, it almost is in, in this could just, we'll call it my theory, but it's like weather 
and you know once a tornado goes through an area you can pretty much be assured there will be another tornado at some point go down that path it's like it makes a a path an unseeable path but i feel like like all this mayhem kind of has the same thing like like if you're a bad dude like do you get to a certain area and go oh yeah this feels right you know like i feel like this is a good place to do a lot of murdering you know, I mean, do they feel this and just not realize it? Like, is this why we repetitively throughout history have these certain hot spots of death? Like, is it kind of like a tornado? I mean, wow, that is, it's, I think it's a wonderful concept to think about and to ponder. I mean, it does make a lot of sense. You know, even when we just look at like the Alamo and we look at, you know, well, originally this was a place where indigenous people, they had to acclimate and they weren't given a lot of choices. Oh, no. And then they're buried there and then forgotten about. Right. And then this horrible battle takes place that makes no sense. And, right. you know, and then it almost just goes into disrepair and the U.S. government abandons it. And it just kind right. of, um, it really is a dark story. And I think that makes sense that darkness can repeat itself i Mm -hmm. think we we hear that a lot in history you know that you know this kind of stuff repeats right yeah you know there's Mm -hmm. throughout and throughout the scottish history at least that i've came across that people will abandon entire castles if a murder is too bad because they knew it was going to absorb into everything and you just you know oh Oh, that makes sense and oh yeah 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 so I'm going to kind of tie this back to the podcast now for a moment. And you had mentioned backstage that you just did your fifth episode today. So I'm kind of curious, what places have you been to on the podcast so far that people can listen to? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, we started the podcast really kind of talking about dark tourism. What is it? Um, that's our first episode. Um, our second episode, we, we talk about America and the dark story, how it was formed. It's just a, kind of like a, a really great way to look at American history and that darkness. Um, and then we go from there to San Antonio. We're in our city. We tell all about the city. Um, you know, we, we're venturing into Corpus Christi. Um, that's a really fun episode. Goliad um, is coming up this coming week along with Yorktown, Texas um, and Victoria. Um, and today we just released Galveston and, of course, had a lot to say about the 1900 storm um, and where you can kind of see a little bit of that history play out throughout the city. Very cool. Cool. So one thing I love about history is like we're taught, you know, going, you know, because we're in Texas, so I'm going to reference Texas history right now. Like Gonzalez being where the first shots of the revolution took place. Sure. I was surprised to learn that's not actually true, that it's in cost. Yeah. Where And it's like, I can't help thinking, though, when you're going, hey, you know, come to cost. It's where the first shots are fired. Doesn't sound as good as, hey, it, come to Gonzalez. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what we have to understand is that, you know, some of these towns, you know, they make their own claims. It's about tourism. It's about bringing people. It's about history. Um, and so you have to do your own research here a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And. I was amazed too going to the actual site of the first shots yeah. that you pull up and there's a little historical marker with an American flag. And I thought that was a little odd being Texas, but okay. And to your right is this open field where it happened. And to the left, somebody's house is right there. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, what what would it be like to live? right on the edge of, or possibly even in where it all started. Sure. Well, sounds like one of us needs to ask them. <laughs> I love that. Good. Point. I'll just make some banana bread and we'll just go hang out with them. Or okay. raisin bread. No, <laughs> not after that story. I'm good. Oh my God. <laughs> we, we're actually going to be covering that story on our podcast for, during Christmas. And so we'll include the recipe for that raisin bread. In that okay. Podcast. I will not. Oh, be that'll be that cool. Recipe. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, so where where are some places that you're wanting to go to for your podcast? Oh yeah. yeah there's um, so many. So many. Um one What's of the places number one hot spot you want to hit. Um if it's well, a secret, it's okay. Oh but. gosh. Um well definitely um St. Augustine. Yeah. We, we would love to, oh, to yeah. Be out there. Um, you know, just as as a destination for for ghost tours. Um, but also knowing the history there um, is one. Uh, you know, one of the ones that we, we really want to include, and we've, not, we've never been, is Tombstone, Arizona. That's definitely uh, on our go, list. I know someone in Tombstone. Uh, I can get the number. She does all the ghost stuff there. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I got you. Love that. Yeah. You know, so that is something. That, then one of the other things is we did a while back um, a cruise to Alaska. And we, oh, we want to unravel, you know, all these stories, especially gold rush stories, the stories of, you know, these old brothels uh, of murders of all these. And then getting into the, you know, these beautiful places of, of, of nature and, and how that even connects to cryptids and everything else out there. So um, Alaska is definitely part of that. Uh, we don't want to go back and really thoroughly look at it. Yeah. Um, one destination that we we've been to but we'd like to go again at some point is um our honeymoon location which is salem massachusetts oh yeah oh, man, it's <laughs> yeah. on my list yes yeah, so we'll, we'll be sharing an episode about that for sure you know uh you can't have dark tourism without the witch trials and so we'll oh, yeah. get there yeah so you guys mentioned Alaska. So I'm curious, are you aware of the triangle there and its effects on everything? You know, I've heard of this theory. I am not an expert. I, I just, it, it's kind of in the back of my head, but um, I'd love to hear more. So, yeah. So it, I found out about it through the History Channel. They did a whole two seasons on it. But yeah, there's apparently because Alaska is so large and it's so pretty much iced over that like maybe two percent of the land has actually been explored and so they're saying like wow. there's all kinds of dinosaurs walking around there oh, there's wow. claims there's claims of cryptids thunderbirds disappearances there's actually been said that the bermuda triangle is got Four times the less people disappearing from it than the Alaska Triangle. Wow. Yet nobody's ever heard of this triangle. There's just some fat bears around. Well, there. we're gonna have to share about this, uh, <laughs> you know, when we get out there. That is fascinating. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and another thing too was like, you know, we study World War II, you know, and the Aleutian Islands right off of Alaska yeah. were heavily bombarded and seized by Japan and then taken back by the Americans, but nobody ever hears of the Battle of the Aleutians. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. So, yeah, you guys got your hands full with a lot of history. Yeah. And a lot there, of there's a lot. We, you know, we, we haven't even entertained leaving our country, so there, there's a lot of stories out there. Yeah. Well, actually, if you go to Alaska, technically you will be leaving our country because it was Russian first. That is true. That is true. So yeah. you could always claim you are in Russian territory. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So, yeah. yeah. So definitely when you're looking up your history of Alaska, don't forget to look up the Russian history. Yeah. I'll, I'll pull in all these fun keywords here. This is great. <laughs> I'll just call him and ask him if I got history questions. I've got to have room for Pinterest and ghosts and podcasts. I, I mean, I, I can't keep Pinterest yeah. out there. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, Is there, I'm, I'm kind of curious with you guys, you know, with the, the dark history aspect, are there any sites where you hear people saying, Oh, there's a lot of activity here and, all of this, and you guys look at it and go, well, according to the history, there's no way you're getting all of this. And I think you guys are overhyping a really small little incident and making it sound like this really giant thing. Do you guys ever come across that? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. We have, we have a spot here, a local spot. Um, the train tracks is a good example of that. 
Um, <laughs> you know, here in San Antonio, we have had people, you know, flocking to this little area off of the south side of San Antonio, probably, you know, 50, 60 years. Um, I did it as a kid with my family. Um, I think Stephen, you know, did it as a kid with his family. Um, you know, kind of the legend, the folklore went that, you know, there was a bus full of kids and it stalled out right in the middle of the train tracks and a train was coming. There was no time. And the train just nailed that bus and killed every single child. And and the legend is that if you go and you put your car on neutral and you put baby powder all over it and you just leave it on neutral with these little ghost children, they're not going to want you to get hit by that train. So they're going to come in. They're going to push you out um, and they're going to put you to safety. And people have been doing this for so many years. People have been flocking out there. However, there's no historical truth that there was ever an accident out there. You know, in fact, the, the legend happens here in San Antonio because actually in Salt Lake City, Utah, there was a bus accident. Same story happened there. The Express posted a picture and it just happened to look like it was off of Shane Road here in San Antonio. People didn't read that headline and people started thinking it was off of Shane Road, and they the, thus the folklore began. And um, and so people go out there all the time. They they swear that it's haunted. But the cool thing is, do you take your meters out there? Despite the history, despite what it is, they're going to go off. They are going to be active. There's going to be weird stuff that happens, and it's an exception. It's because I think this place, families for so long have been going out there to scare their kids, to have fun, to just get a good scare in. And that energy, I think it, it, it stayed within the tracks. I think it stayed in that area and it repeats. I think that sometimes we create haunts through our own psychic energy. And that can be fascinating. It can be fun. But I think it can also make memories. It's made a lot of memories for me over the years. I love the tracks. Every Halloween, we still drive out there, even though we know that the history isn't there. And we every Halloween, we still enjoy being pushed over, even though now it's been re-leveled. Uh, supposedly it's not really supposed to happen it's still happening you just have to get a little closer perhaps it's just uh you know the dynamics of you know how it's built but it's still fascinating it's still fun and i think that's a good example yeah. of you know how you know a location can just be psychically intruded on <laughs> see and i have a theory about that as well and it kind of goes along with what you're saying is like i use the example of so you got grandpa, you know, in this building that used to be his house and he's haunting it and everybody hears him move something. He goes, oh, my God, there's a demon. <laughs> well, grandpa's sitting there going, where? You know, I'm not a demon, but everybody will start antagonizing and calling out. And after a while, he, you know, grandpa's like, you know what? You guys want a demon? I can you know, summon up the energy and I can start acting out and make it really look like a demon. And, you know, how many, you know, times does that happen to where a lot of places where the, we have these dark spirits were actually gentle spirits that just were so many times, like you're saying, of their yeah. generation of people coming in saying, oh, this is a bad person. Right. Yeah. Like, you want a bad person? I'll give you a bad person. Yeah. I mean, I think just by being harassed by, you know, every day, you know, every time somebody comes in, I think that enough can just uh, change the dynamic. That makes a lot of sense. Good right. theory. Yeah. yeah. And I think that ties into yours, For sure. you know, with the tracks is, you know, people keep coming in and saying, this happened, this happened, that the land's like, hey, you know, people are giving us this energy we don't know what to do with. Let's just let it be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's magical in its own way. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the stories and I have appreciated, you know, it was even something I believe on Sub Mysteries covered back in the day. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've appreciated it since then, whether it's psychic energy or something else. It's still. Yeah. I think, Stephen, were you going to add something or did I jump on you? Yeah, no, no. I was just going to say that um, that's why, you know, your example of antagonizing. Um, for us, it's really important whenever we go to a destination that we know has some activity and we take people there, um, we teach that you want to approach it with respect um, and kindness. Um, and that's especially important when you have locations like Victoria's Black Swan Inn where there's a family that lives there. 
um, because you know we're, after we leave, the family is going to have to live with with that activity. Um, right. And if you have people believing that there's demons when there's not, um, you know that that can you know antagonize. That can bring up something that is not friendly um, and not something that the family necessarily wants. Right, and let's be honest with Victoria Black Swan in. They claim to have Annabelle's house in the front yard, so they really don't need any additional <laughs> problems there. Uh, very cool. Yeah, so that uh, that dollhouse is very fascinating, um, and we, we always share the story of it and uh, a little bit of history connected to the family. So is it, do you guys feel like it really is Annabelle's house or? No, um, not at all. It, it, it belonged to Jingles. Um, it, she, she lived in the property. Um, she was a daughter of Park Street and Jolene Wood Street. Um, and, um, you know, she, she played in it. It, it, it definitely, um, the reason why people connect it with Annabelle is because Annabelle's visited the property. Um, with Lorraine Warren during kind of a, a launch party for The Conjuring when it came out in 2013. Um, so, you know, Annabelle was close to this this dollhouse, but um, it's not her. She never was in it. Um, she was just close by to it. And so people associated with Annabelle the doll just because she visited the, the property. Okay, that's good to know because I, I was, because I think there's even a sign on there that says Annabelle's, house and it's like you, yeah, you sit there I, and you're like okay so i think that is... somebody placed that there that was not by the property i think somebody just creatively put that there and i think it's since been removed so just <laughs> okay well that's good because <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm glad you saw that though that was cool <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. i was like i even was taking a picture going yeah bell's like Far East. What? Why would yeah, our house be that, here? That's the connection. Of... There. 2013. Annabelle visited the property for a launch party for the Conjuring film. That's it. <laughs> but cool. cool stuff. So, yeah, you guys mentioned right now looking just domestic. Do you guys have any plans of going international? Definitely. Um, definitely. Um, we we want to include Mexico. Um, we've done some traveling there. We have a lot of ideas to share about Mexico, um, both the city and Guanajuato and a couple other places. Um, you know, eventually we want to get to, you know, to every place that has a dark history and share. Um, of course, one of those places, one of the OG dark history places, of course, is Pompeii. So hopefully right. we'll get out there at some point too. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And I, I, I just had a, just because I know of it in Mexico. I'm like, and the doll factor just is so creepy. I'm like, are you guys wanting to go to the valley or the island of the dolls? Yes, um, we have been to Isla de Muñecas before. Um, we uh, we had a wonderful time visiting it. It is haunting. It is it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nature is very beautiful. So Chimilco um, is wonderful to ride around and get to know. Um, it, it, definitely a place that if you're into dark tourism you should visit yeah i i definitely can see that you guys are because i'm like you tell me there's an island of creepy dolls i'm like no i i really don't see the need to go there but why are we going there you guys are like yes it's a great <laughs> yeah. place it's, it's fabulous i'm it's like great. it's beautiful what? Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. The story is so fascinating. Um, and I think it's very interesting that people still go out there every day um, and they see this work, you know, and they see these dolls and they see the, the homage that they are to the spirit world there. And I just think it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. The story is beautiful. It's just having like at night with fire, all these creepy dolls just staring at you. I just I don't see that very comforting. <laughs> okay, I, I mean, I, I agree. We'll, we'll be honest. We were there during the day, not at night. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, guys, we're actually a little bit over the hour, so I'm sure you guys got things to do as well. Is there 
anything you want to promote any events coming up that you guys are doing sure we have our psychic and spirit fest um it is a it's a, it's a para like conference here in san antonio um, we have several speakers um we have some great speakers coming in ryan buell will be here um it is september the 16th victoria's black swan went in um speakers home tours lots of vendors specialty drinks it should be a lot of fun um and you can get tickets at curioustwins.com and just a quick shout out for you guys thank you guys for having us on michael um it is really great to connect with you and thank you for the invitation yes and i gotta say the fun thing about this group is i we i was just like looking at some stuff in san antonio and i saw your guys's site and i was like on facebook and i was like wait a minute these guys are local how come i've never heard of them <laughs> and they're doing tours they're doing all this stuff and I was like, I got to get these guys on the show. And so I was so grateful that you guys were like, yeah, let's do this. Because I was like, yeah, you guys didn't know me. I, I don't know you. But it was like really cool how we just connected. And it was like, yeah. And I'm so glad we got to share you guys out. And I hope it helps, you know, with people knowing that you're in the san antonio area and i will definitely pass your information on when people ask me like who's in the san antonio area i'll be like curious <laughs> twins go check them Thank out awesome well it's been a pleasure we really appreciate you um please i know that your your co-hosts had to sign off already um please tell her thank you for us it was just a, a treat yes i will and i love how I'm sure you guys are, you know, have this too of, you know, equipment always glitching, whatever the spirits are brought up. Yeah. <laughs> it can happen. Yeah. Well, great. All right. Well, thank you again for coming on and thank you to the chat group. And we look, you know, if ever you guys have something coming up, you know, feel free to hit us up and we'll uh, promote it and we'll, you know, maybe one day cross paths and be able to investigate together. That would be amazing. Absolutely. We would love that. Thank you yeah. so much, Michael. We really thank appreciate you, thank it. you. Yeah. And thank you, everybody. I, I will. And one thing I'll leave you with that uh, Cleburne Tracy Mays is doing is she does a tour of like the city, like a ghost tour and then does an investigation right after it so it's like Bring the combination of the two is really fun yeah yeah we'll have to hit that what city is she in again cleburne cleburne okay that's okay. right that's all right. awesome thank you yeah well it's been wonderful thank you so much yes thank you guys and check them out curious twins paranormal.com correct correct thank you. awesome i actually remember the website <laughs> He did. <laughs> All right, so um, stay tuned next week, guys. We are going to have, if I can look at my calendar real quick, Dr. David Bettenhausen and Carla Bogni Kid on. So stay tuned for that one. That's going to be a fun episode. Thank you, guys, and to everybody out there watching. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful evening. Get some good sleep. And good night, everyone. Night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. You have just listened to the energy that surrounds us with your host, Michael Koff. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.